Welcome to How to Money with Cole and Cole. I'm Cole. And I'm Cole. We coach people every day on their money and how to plan for the future. As financial advisors, we're here to have an honest conversation and educate you on how to money. Intentionally and passionately to hit your money goals. And we'll throw in some sports talk along the way. Our mission and goal of this podcast is to improve your money journey and help you create the financial life you deserve. So let's talk money and sports. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back to How to Money with Cole and Cole. I'm your host, Caleb Westall with Spin Market, as always, and I'm joined by the stars of the show, Cole with a K and Cole with a C. How's Stop, it going? Stars of the show. Uh, yeah. I know. That's, that's, that's flattering. I know. Thanks, Caleb. Gotta do, very gotta important do my best. today, I know. Cole. I got to make my clients feel good about themselves. All right. <laughs> I appreciate that. I know. Both of our heads are getting bigger at the, right. by the moment. Right. Uh, right. We'll still have the argument about which is spelt better, but you know what? They're both the stars of the show. We've yeah. been told not to talk about that anymore. Yeah. So. Oh, okay. For that I see. joke's getting old, yeah. and that's why we're going to run it into the ground. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm still going to side with Cole with C. Just no. I appreciate yeah. it, buddy. Hey, no problem. You know, when you when your name starts with a C, you have to pick yep. the C. So, um, well, it's been two weeks since we talked about retirement, and we talked about how the Masters happened, and Cole with a C picked the correct or picked the second place finisher. Yeah. And but also Cole with a K picked the NCAA champion. So as you're listening to this, it is May 17th or later, depending on when you hear it. Today, as we record this, is April 18th. So any sports talk you hear, just know that we're talking a month ago because and we're not dumb. We just <laughs> we don't know yet. We don't know what's in the future. Yep. Yeah. So wish we had those powers. Right. I, yeah. Right. That'd be nice. Um. But uh, so let's see here. Coming up is the NFL draft. Yeah, yeah. and um, I know my Panthers have a good pick, but I don't really care anymore because <laughs> they're just bad, and it's yeah. just how it goes. But uh, well, let's talk about the Steelers situation. They got an interesting situation. Dwayne Haskins passed away. Yeah, RIP. crazy. Yeah, yeah. Um, Cole Jass. He's a huge Steelers fan, and um, they got Mitch Trubisky. Ben Roethlisberger retired. We got kind of a quarterback uh, question mark, I would say. So who knows? And that's that's a uh, – we'll see. The draft's coming up, I know. and um, Or no, I guess we're in the rear. When would the draft be based well, on the podcast? Today, but, today the draft is coming up. When yep. they hear this, it'll be in the rear view. So so, so next time we record and, and we're on air here, we'll know whether the Steelers – but I, I think we'll probably take a, a quarterback. So so I'll be curious to see. Yeah, curious to see what happens there. But, yeah, crazy uh, – uh, sad, sad story there going yeah. on. So it's kind of relevant to, not that I want to transition out of our sports talk at all, but relevant for our topic today too, the unexpected. But uh, uh, one other thing maybe kind of going on that would be relevant for our listeners is uh, Mother's Day, right? Yeah. All right. Happy, Mother's Day. You know, happy Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, even though it's ahead of time. So Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. yeah. yeah happy so. Mother's Day, Karen, my, wa- my, uh, my wife, <laughs> <laughs> my mom, Karen, my wife, Molly, uh, both great mothers and I appreciate them both a lot. And I know that Cole's got, uh, yeah, got Chelsea, my wife, uh, amazing mother, my mom, Christy, and, uh, my stepmom, Heather, uh, all amazing, great impacts in my life. So along with all the other moms that we, we can't mention yeah. on here. So yeah, yeah happy Mother's Day to my mom, Laura. Oh, yeah. She's an awesome mom. Does she listen so. to the podcast? Will, will she listen to the podcast? Um, not this one or the one that the market does, but like she might listen to certain ones, but yeah. this is not all up right. her alley. Yeah. <laughs> I also want to say happy Mother's Day to all the mothers at our office too at Central Financial Group. We yep. have many women that work there. Angie, Bailey, Emily, Kirsten. Don't forget anybody. I know. I know that's that's somebody. always downfall when you start saying names, right? Yeah. You're yeah. Leave someone well, else, all but. the mothers at Central Financial Group. Happy Mother's Day, and thank you for all that you do. I know that my life would never be the same without my mother or my wife. Um, I don't want to trade places with them. They do way more yep. than I do. I'm, I'm a bum compared to them, but, um, you know, I, I, uh, I just want to say. Brownie points. Cole's trying to get the brownie yeah. points. <laughs> yeah, there you go. I uh, just want to say thank you, and, and we do appreciate the, all the mothers in our life, and, and uh, thanks for bringing that up, Cole. Yeah, yeah. definitely. So, um, so yeah, thank, happy Mother's Day to everybody out there. Uh, I know coming up is Father's Day, and Father's Day weekend brings the uh, U.S. Open for the yeah, golf tournament. Uh, yeah, the other one of the other really big ones every year. So yeah. not my favorite golf tournament. No, I'm uh, not the a, Masters is 
is much better, and I actually enjoy the British Open a lot better. I, so I was just going to say that I, I love I love the British Open just purely because of the time difference. So it's like you you wake up in the morning, the first thing you flip on, it's Tigers playing number nine or something. But yeah. uh, did did come out today actually? Uh, Phil and uh, Phil and Tiger both committed to play the U.S. Open. So yeah. at this point, you know they're 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 scheduled into play. Who knows what happens? But that'll be a uh, I'm sure that'll be a big thing, especially with all the obviously craziness of, of Tiger's life the last 18 months, but then Phil's kind of had some controversies himself. So having them both yeah. back in uh, back in action should be probably pretty fun. You remember when Tiger was going through his run and, and the big question was, would you take Tiger or the field? Yeah. Like right now, I think it's, would you take Scotty Scheffler? Yeah. Or would you take the field? Because I might take Scotty Scheffler. That's crazy. I mean, he's just He's hot. And he, yeah. I mean, it's like... He can't miss. Yep. I mean, it's unbelievable. I mean, the only putts he missed were on 18 of the Masters. Yeah, yeah, that's Forced for five-stroke lead. It didn't matter, but, yep. yeah. I mean, the guy has just been on fire. Wish I knew what that felt like. <laughs> I saw something that said, like, uh, Scotty Scheffler was, like, by far the fastest person uh, to be number one in the world and was, like, to ever win a mate, uh, one of, the, like, top tournaments or something like that. Or maybe it was just the – Masters, but he already has more career winnings, I believe, than than Jack Nicholas ever, ever yeah. had in, in like dollar amount. Which that's how much they're making now. But right. like, there's like multiple like legends that he already has more, and he's been on the tour like three years, maybe. <laughs> I think Scotty ever writes Tiger notes. Thanks, Tiger. Yeah, no doubt. Yeah. <laughs> they all, you yeah. know, they all even, are making even even way more money yeah, than they would. Even have. Phil, like Phil, yeah. Phil has yeah. clashes with Tiger, but he still is like, hey, Tiger changed monetarily, changed the game. Oh yeah, you know, so that's absolutely. Yeah, and you can see that with these guys now and some of the purses that they have. It's unbelievable. Yeah, yeah talking about um, big money salaries for sports players, you know, talking about free agency in the NFL. Oh, yeah. Is, you're seeing guys like uh, Devontae Adams went to the Raiders, and he, like, got one of the biggest wide receiver contracts ever. Right. Uh, Him like and two Tyree days Hill. after they signed Aaron Rodgers to the biggest yeah. quarterback contract yeah. ever. Yeah. They had to trade. And they trade Devonte Adams to the Packers, which they had to. They couldn't keep him under. They wouldn't be under the cap, and and so they had to. And I, I would assume Rodgers knew that going into. Yeah, it. had to have. Had to. I, it's well, it's they were crazy. You see the numbers. They out were there. originally going to franchise tag him, and then he was like, "I want my money. I Adams, want out." Yeah. So they traded him because he then, probably would have said you know, out. Yeah. Him and Tyree Kill both got huge bags. Mm-hmm. Who's your so, Who's your uh, NFL team, Caleb? Uh, Carolina Panthers. We don't. Talk oh yeah, about yeah, that. Duh, duh, I yeah, that. yeah. We we've uh, we've got our own quarterback drama. Yep. Yeah, yeah the I best heard running t- back in the in the league, but yeah, yeah, if he can stay healthy, yeah, right, that's true. And he's kind of getting that age where you know he's been around for four or five years now, and it's it gets tougher to be running. You see, they in about three or three good years or so, and then yep. his age and the beating kind of mm-hmm. takes a toll on them. Derrick Henry's point. been the exception. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's he's well, he got like a injury last year though. Yeah, yeah, specimen though, it's true. So. Yeah. Um, yeah, we've got. I heard today Baker Mayfield is potentially going to Carolina, and I was just like, I'm just going to emancipate my Carolina Panthers fan to oh give up. Oh boy. Good luck. Yeah. Um, but, so we've talked about your Steelers. Yep. We've talked about your Panthers a little bit. How about my Broncos? Uh-oh. Russell Wilson? Yep, yep. Come on, man. I've got a bunch of buddies that are like really big Broncos fans. So I, along with Cole, so I know more about the Broncos than I, you know, than probably my the fans or the the viewers of the of the podcast would ever want to know. So I, I, heard I had not seen it at all, and a, and a client of mine walked in. He's like, "You got to be happy." And I'm like, "Happy about what?" He's like, "You haven't seen the TV." Have you? I was like, "No, I haven't been on my phone all day." And he's like, "They signed Russell Wilson today." And I was like. What? <laughs> yeah, I was so excited. Well, they, I, I watched this guy, um, and he said, he said the Broncos are a quarterback away from being a, in the Super Bowl bubble. Yeah. And now they've got the quarterback. We'll see if they are actually in the Super Bowl bubble. But see, 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 see if the hype, see yeah. if the hype goes. Yeah, a lot, well, I mean, just it was like tough the, to perform, just like the Rams did last year. Though. I'm not saying the Broncos are going to win the Super Bowl this year, but they, they did have the number one defense in the league, which you need to win Super Bowls. Yep. Yeah. Um, and you know they they had poor quarterback play, so we'll we'll see how it goes. Yeah, it'll be interesting. I just know that my Panthers are going to be bad again, and what's new? So, unfortunately, <laughs> uh, a whole lot. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. but you know what? It's fine. There's greater things in life than um, football. Yeah, that's for sure. Like life insurance. Not many. Our life topic insurance. for today. <laughs> yeah, life insurance, man. Uh, so switching switching gears a little bit. So that's uh, yeah, you know, a big piece of the. Uh, of the puzzle and things, uh, you know, for people's personal financial pictures. But, uh, 
You know, and I, I would say uh, we've got someone that's got a pretty wide scope of knowledge on the life insurance. I don't know, you know, uh, in the life insurance arena, right, Cole? Uh, I don't know who you're talking about. Somebody else coming, <laughs> is coming is in. Is uh, You know, I'm going to defer to Cole with a K here on this one. <laughs> yep. Me too, Cole with a K. Yeah, yeah. Well, so I, I did, I do dive into life insurance a lot with people, and because a, I think it's super, super important at all different age brackets for different reasons. When you're young, like, like Mr. Cole Jasky over here, I would still consider myself somewhat young. I have young children. <laughs> so when you're younger, like us, obviously you're looking at, uh, you know, you have a wife and you have kids and you got to have that protection that if, if you don't have, especially when you're there, there's different levels of what people need based on how much money they make. Um, how dependent they are on their income. So if you're a, you know, someone has a stay at home mom or stay at home dad, uh, and the other person makes, you know, they have to be more heavily insured, things like that. So, um, there's not one answer for everybody. So that, that's the biggest thing about life insurance. Everyone's like, well, how much life insurance do I need? I'm like, well, how much money do you make? You know, uh, how much do you depend on that money? Do you make? What do you want to use it for? What do you want? Yeah. You know, there's different, there's also you know, different things that can be used for. I think that's a, a common mm-hmm. misconception. You know, it's, it's only used for one thing where in all reality, there's a lot of different options based on, you know, the individual. And, and I think we, you know, this is kind of uh, something we harp at, but it, you know, each person's different, you know, and I think that's the thing is each plan's customized and, you know, the same thing is just like we look at your retirement plan that way. We look at, you know, what's the, the protection needs or uh, the life insurance needs. Um, and there's mm-hmm. multiple strategies and multiple things. And it comes down to what, what, the, um, what the client's really looking for. Yeah, it can fit into your financial plan in many different ways. Um, the, main way, the, the main way is, is income replacement, I would say, for the, for the younger crowd, obviously. Yep. And uh, the, the, the older crowd, I would say that it fits more into either cash accumulation or um, getting that long-term care part taken care of. So there's, there's two main types of, of insurance. So when we get into insurance, there, there's term insurance, which is really insurance. Um, when you, when you think of term insurance, think of your car insurance, if you life insurance, if term insurance, if, if you don't die, which we all hope you don't, but if you don't die, then there is no benefit. There is no cash balance. There isn't, you're, you're purely using it for insurance, just like your car insurance. If you don't file a claim, it, you know, you don't get that money back. I don't, do you get the money back, Paul? No, I, I, I wish I did, but I always compare it. This is maybe I think this is a simple example, but. I compare it to, you know, renting your house versus owning your house, right? You pay your rent, you get to live where you want. Same thing with term. You pay pay your rent or you pay your premiums. Same thing with your car insurance. You get it. You pay your mortgage, right? Some of that goes to equity. Some of that goes down to pay down the debt. Same thing in a cash value life insurance policy. Some goes to pay the premium. So you have the life insurance. Some goes to a cash value bucket. So that's kind of an easy way that, uh, and we're going to talk a little bit about, about both, both buckets there, but uh that's kind of an analogy I've used and, and uh, resonated with me anyways when I was learning uh, about the difference and, and different strategies of both. So how soon do you think people should start worrying about life insurance? This is because well, there's two well, two things I have. How soon, but also like, um, you know, I always think of life insurance as, like I've always thought of it as it's for in case I die. But I mean, you guys, you've already touched on it. So like what, mm-hmm. um, how soon and what are the good benefits of it other than having it in case somebody dies? Well, well, let's talk about the in case you die situation first. Okay, so when do you need it in case you die? Basically, it's when people, other people are dependent on mm-hmm. you to for, for income or for you to provide uh, something for their life. So um, I you know, use our, our situations as far as, you know, having a wife or a husband that either you know one stays at home or, or one doesn't or both of them work. Either way, they're depending on each other, right? So yeah. a lot of times it, what triggers people needing life insurance is they get married. Yep. They have kids. They maybe accumulate debt, buy a house. So there's different reasons that you would get life insurance, but that's really what you got to think about. If, if, if I was gone, what? how would that impact other people in my life? And then... Obviously, if you say, well, it wouldn't, then you don't really need life insurance, yeah. I guess. But most people, it would impact somebody's life if they were gone. Yeah. 
not only if they, they would be sad, but they would financially they would be impacted is what I'm talking about. Yeah, You're kind of a you know an example of it, right? You're starting to you know make a, a step in your life or getting married soon. I don't know how how long, but getting married, then you guys will probably look at buying a house or something where you guys have shared assets now and. You know, maybe you buy that house based on both of your incomes, but what happens if one of your incomes goes away? Right. And that's where, you know, you kind of start looking and putting the pieces together and saying, okay, that's how we back into rough, uh, you know, roughly the amount you'd want. And then it's, you know, obviously there can be other goals and objectives tied to that, but um, that's, that's generally where we start. Yeah. T- t- so, so we're, we're really, we're talking about insurance just in general, but cool. Let's dig deeper into what term insurance is. Okay. Yep. Like, because this is something that I'm a really big proponent of, especially for younger people like, like a Caleb. So, yeah. Right. So, you know, term insurance is just, just basically what it, what it sounds like. It's you're buying insurance for a set period of time. Um, and most generally it's anywhere from five to 30 year durations. Um, you know, when a couple things that kind of, I would say they go along with the term insurance versus the other types. Generally, it's going to be relatively cheaper because you're not buying it forever. You're buying it for a set period of time. Um, and, and there's a lot of, lot of flexibility, you know, as you get further on and make changes to the other types of life policies. But generally, that's the, the first st- step for someone is a lot of times the, is to get a term policy or something that covers income needs, maybe debt, whatever it might be at a relatively lower cost. And, and, you know, back to kind of the, the you know, age, age-based thing too is, is when and how much, all that stuff. You know, a lot of times, you know, like your age, Caleb, for example, you're the healthiest you're probably, you know, ever going to be at this age, right? Yeah. So, so insurance-wise, you're the cheapest to insure, you know, so, so at this point. So that's where it's, it's, a, it's a smart thing as you're, as you're hitting those checkpoints in life. To, it's, it's something that should be kind of in your starter pack or something to think think about, you know, like, hey, what are the one or two things that I should look at as I'm getting married, starting a family, buying a house, you know, uh, looking at term insurance or some type of life insurance at a, at a young age is, is something that's you know probably very important. Yeah, because term insurance can be very, very affordable, um, you know, even for a, like a $500,000 policy, it can it can you know, be a couple McDonald's meals. A yeah. month. It's, it's really not that yep. expensive. Uh-huh. Um, but the major downfall is that you're putting this money into just like yep. your car insurance and, you know, you don't get that money back if unless something happens to you, then your loved ones get it. Yep. And you stop paying it and most time it goes away. I mean, there's, there are some nuances and features that where it doesn't, but but shifting gears a little bit, talk to, you know, there's, there's all different types, you know, whole life, universal life, variable life, you know, talk to us, Cole, a little bit about the, the, the other side. So we got term, yeah, you know, talk so. a little bit more of the cash value side, or, and there's a lot to that, but mm-hmm. uh, give us a summary of that. Yeah. So, so term insurance is, is the rental insurance. Um, the other insurance is called permanent insurance. And, and along with permanent insurance, just like there's mar- many different types of term insurance, there's many different types of permanent insurance. Permanent insurance, probably the most common people have heard of is whole life. Um, so they, they pay a premium for the whole life. They got the life insurance for as long as they pay the premium, they got it for their whole life. Um, and there's universal life, which is, is probably the most commonly sold right now. Yep. Um, and, and because whole life is, is more on the expensive end, universal life is, is a little bit cheaper and it's based on, uh, a lot of them are based on indexes. So universal life, you're putting money into it. So let's just say the premium is hundred dollars a month. Maybe 80 of that goes into the investment account and 20 goes to pay the actual insurance part of it. So you're getting a cash accumulation. So you're going to eventually 10, 20, 30 years down the road, you're going to you might still have all that insurance, you know, say you have $500,000 worth of insurance, but you're also going to maybe have $20,000 in a cash bucket that you can borrow off of. You can do whatever you want with at that point. Gotcha. So with the insurance thing, um, there's the different types, but what would you say like, like how does someone determine, I mean, you kind of said it's just about your age. Like, would you say a term for someone like me, to go universal versus term now is there like a reason that you should go one or the other now other than that you said it's cheaper to do term but like is there are big benefits of going universal with the cash bucket now i'll i'll maybe say universal um the the, the major differences between like a universal life or a cash value life and, and term right there's the universal life there can be 
changes and flex, you know, it has more flexibility where the term's kind of a, a, a flat set. It's exactly, it is what it is. After you get approved, that's what it is. Um, you know, it depends on your strategy and what you're kind of looking. You know, I, I would think Cole, Cole would agree with me with this. With younger people, we're generally going to try to get term insurance really cheap, get you covered to the points of like, hey, income replacement, you know, my mortgage, my car payment, make sure, or whatever it might be, whatever the things we want to cover, and try to get you to use more of an investment vehicle like a Roth IRA or, or something on those stands, just because just it... You only have so much money to save, and right. the problem with getting into the universal life or the whole lives, they, they take some money to, I mean, you've got to be, and they're a commitment. They're great vehicles and have a lot of benefits to them, but, you know, when you're trying to invest and do some of these things on a budget, sometimes it can be a little tighter to where um, it doesn't make as much sense at this point with, with someone's maybe when they're at their lower end of their earning years. Yeah, so, so I know we say this very frequently, but it's different. It, it just varies yeah, with every hard. person. I, you know, I might have a 20-year-old that I would recommend a universal yep. life policy for, and then the next 20-year-old that comes in, I, they're, you know, I'd only do term with them. So yep. budget, uh, how much they're looking to invest, how much they're, you know, wanting to get covered, how, you know, what's their health, parents' health history, grandparents' health. It, there's, there's a lot of different things that we go through to determine what is the right life insurance, just like we do for the right investment products. I mean, it is... It isn't something that we, every person gets the same thing. Yep. So, yep. Well, I think with that, we're going to take a big, quick break and then we'll come back and keep, keep talking about life insurance. And we're going to hear a word from our production team, as always, Spin Market in Fort Dodge, Iowa. This podcast is produced by Spin Market and Digital. Located in Fort Dodge, Iowa, Spin Market's highly skilled team can help you increase your market by updating your website, improving SEO, designing advertisements, and producing podcasts that will grab the attention of your market. Contact Spin Market today for all your digital marketing needs at digitalagent at spinmarketwith2ks.com or call us at 515-302-8026. And to learn more, visit our website at www.spinmarketwith2ks.com. That's digitalagent at spinmarket.com or 515 515- 302-8026 or visit our website www.spinmarketwith2ks.com Welcome back to How to Money. Uh, thank you to Spin Market for all the work they've been putting into this for yes. How to Money with Cole and Cole. Um, we're gonna, so we've been talking about a lot about life insurance from a younger perspective, term insurance, mm-hmm. um, someone my age, but Kind of switching, you know, someone like maybe my grandparents, they're a little bit older. They don't have kids in the house anymore. Right. You know, my grandpa's retired. Both of my grandparents are retired. Mm -hmm. You know, so you're like, well, then they don't really have, so why should they have life insurance? You know? Cole, what do you think? There's there's really two main reasons that that someone in in their later years would have life insurance. Um, First one is it's called hybrid life insurance, and it's a universal life product, so I don't want to get too big in the weeds, but the, the meaning of the hybrid product is that you know it's, it's life insurance, so if you, if you pass away, it has a death benefit attached to it. But if you don't pass away and go to a nursing home facility or need some sort of long-term care, even home daycare or home, home care, um, adult daycare, whatever sort of care you need, there are hybrid policies that allow you to use that death benefit. So again, let's just say the death benefit is $500,000 again. Uh, if I go to a nursing home and I need $50,000 a year to help supplement my care, I can take it out of that hybrid policy, take it out tax-free, and now I can have it for 10 years if I happen to be there. And then, yes, the death benefit would be at zero, but at the same time, I got to use all that money tax-free. So there are reasons for people to have life insurance later in life, it's more, it's got more uh, facets of why you would do it than just the simple term insurance. Like, hey, if I die, I want my family to be covered. Um, there, there's, there's, you know, long-term care insurance is a thing of the past too. That's something that we don't really talk about much anymore with people. It's just there's very few companies that are even offering it anymore. So the traditional long-term care has, has really, uh, you know, it's. It's transitioned to the hybrid products where that's more where people are getting some of their coverage 
or their or exposure to long-term care insurance is through some of these hybrid life policies. Yeah, and the, the traditional long-term care from, you know, 20 years ago that was being sold door-to-door to every person that in, in Iowa, Nebraska, wherever, is it, just by the wayside. It's, yep. it's not something being sold anymore, and, and there's many, many reasons, uh, but mainly because premiums are rising really highly on those, and then you know, the amount cost of coverage, of, yep, cost of care, you know, yeah, got, there was, costs have just gotten too crazy expensive that they, they don't keep up with it. So, uh, so getting off topic there, but as far as the long-term care writers on life insurance, that would be a, a reason that people would get something later on in life as far as life insurance goes. Um, another reason is for legacy planning. And Nicole, I know that you've, you've done this with, with several different people. Yep. So talk to us through that, how that works. Yeah. So, you know, all, all these universal life or different cash value type policies, right? They can have multi, you know, multi goals or, or many different uses, but, you know, legacy planning is, is, is a big one, I would say. So that, that's, you know, I'll just give an example as say, you know, mom and dad, they're 70 years old and they've got a million dollars in their stock account and a million dollars in their retirement account. They got a million dollars of insurance. They, they maybe want to spend down all their cash, you know, all their cash, use everything, because that's where all their money's coming, knowing, hey, we're going to leave the kids this million dollar tax free um, life insurance, because that's one big benefit of life, the life insurance proceeds. When someone does pass away, the death benefits tax is a tax free benefit versus, you know, maybe that stock account that would have, you know, some type of, or, or retirement account that would have some type of tax implications for the, for the heirs. So, so that's something that there, it can be used, you know, I've seen it in the agriculture um, world where it can be used more as an equalization where you got a brother and sister, brother farms with dad and mom, sister's not involved in the farming operation, um, maybe brother's getting the land, um, sister's getting life insurance proceeds. That's yep. the same thing. That's an equalization, somewhat of a legacy tool. Or um, I've seen people leave uh, death benefit proceeds to, to charities. You know, or to, to um, you know, maybe they're a big fan. They want to leave money to Iowa State or, or Iowa or whatever it might be. And they'll, they'll make uh, the university uh, a beneficiary of, of um, you know, of their life policy. So it's part of their, their giving strategy or legacy strategy is when they pass away, that policy uh, is going to be shared to, to that charity or university or whatever, whatever someone chooses. I think, it's, I think it's important for us to explain legacy planning. We use that term a lot. And, and I think... People maybe have heard that before, but really we're talking about passing money down a generation. Yep. How do we get that money to the next generation? And what we're talking about with life insurance is how do we get that tax efficiently to them or tax free with when it comes to life insurance? So legacy planning is how do we get that money passed down to the next generation um, in the best way possible? Makes sense. So it's it's the diff, it's the planning for the future in a much different way. Yep. Then instead mm-hmm. of me planning for my future, I'm planning for my kid's future or whatever it could be. Right, know? right. Let's right. say there's like three state. You kind of think of like the three stages mm-hmm. uh, of, of you know financial planning, be like accumulation. Then you 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 flip to maybe retirement and spending, and then you get to the third step, which is legacy planning or okay, the transitioning of your wealth to the next generation. That's kind of you know we're kind of talking mm-hmm. you know, with the legacy strategy be the back half of that third stretch. Yeah. So. I w- there was one other thing you guys had mentioned this off um, before was, you know, somebody like your wife who, let's say you own a business, you own a financial business. Right. Um, and something happens to you and you can't, but your wife doesn't want in on it in any way. Right. You know, right. so how does life insurance mix into a business side of things, not just for you personally, but your business? Yeah. So that's the example that I, I was talking about with with Cole Jasky earlier is like, my wife doesn't want to do yeah. my job. Um, so if I pass away, someone else has to do my job. So uh, talk a little bit about how that, how that works. Yeah. So, you know, generally we'll, we'll see that with, with like a, you know, a buy sell. Say you have a partner, I'm just giving an example, a partner uh, in a business where it's 50, 50. Uh, most generally there'll be a buy sell document, you know, for, for that business. So it's, that just says, okay, what happens if one of the other want to want to leave? you know, the business, how does that, how does that work? And that's just put some stuff in writing. But a lot of times we'll see is, you know, what happens if something unexpectedly happens, you know, and they didn't really get to make that decision, you know, so that's where life insurance generally we'll see, um, we're, we'll fund life insurance. Each owner will buy life insurance policy on each other with uh, the sole purpose being if something happens to one or the other, those funds are then used to, to, you know, buy out the, you know, 
the existing spouse or whoever whoever would would be inheriting that, that uh-huh. business owner so so they can afford then to keep full control of that business and you're not forced to into a business partnership uh, or someone that you don't want to or if you have multiple owners there could be four or five owners where it's it's quite complex um and you know you know likelihood of something happening obviously unfortunate but you know you got to have some of that in place otherwise you know, when you don't have the plan in place, a lot of times, you know, you got to sell the business or something happens where the money's not there and there's a lot of issues. Mm-hmm. So it's all about keeping things from going to chaos if something were to happen. Planning for the unexpected. Right? Yeah. That's kind of the, the tough, the morbid part about it. Yeah. So. <laughs> Life insurance is one of those tough topics because, you know, like if stuff has to get used, then something happened. Yeah. yeah. It's like, Unfortunately, we do see it. And, yep. and, and, and when they don't have a plan in place, it does get pretty hectic mm-hmm. where it's not something that is easy to solve because basically somebody has to write a big check or that person that wasn't in the business, the spouse, has to start running a business that they maybe don't know a whole lot about. There was a business in town that that happened to recently. Mm-hmm. The, uh, the owner passed away and wife or um daughter or something like that ended up having to take control of it and it was like and the business shut down within six months yeah it's crazy you know just recently so it it happens yeah it happens more Mm -hmm. in in small business owners because the small business owners put their whole life into that yeah they are the only ones that can really run the company that that way and no one you know it's a it is it's a tough thing to like planning for those contingencies of that and that's where just having something in place of making that decision and just hey, I I want to I want to make sure that at least there's de- because ultimately the the life insurance will come and there'll be dollars there to help buy some time too right, right. for a spouse to get things figured out whatever it might be um, versus not having anything there the bills don't stop right things keep going on businesses keep going so mm-hmm. it puts people in positions where they're forced to do things where they can't just make the right decision they're just forced to do one thing and that's. That's where planning ahead, you can, you know, you can uh, you know, plan for some of that. You can't obviously plan for everything, but, you know, it can definitely uh, help if something crazy happens. Hopefully avoid some of the chaos and heartache because of it. Yep. Yeah. Right. So, um, well, that's about all the time we have for this episode. So uh, thank you all again uh, for listening. Of course, we couldn't put on a podcast without listeners. So I um, appreciate everybody who's tuned in to listen. I hope we gave you... That they, I shouldn't say we, because I'm not giving any insight in this, but I hope Cole and Cole gave some good insight to you on why life insurance is important. And I hope you join us again next time. Um, It'll be uh, almost time for the U.S. Open after Mother's Day. And uh, football season will be only a couple months away. So I'm sure they'll have some more sports talk next week and whatever financial topic we have. And we'll go from there. Uh, Cole with a K. Where can they find you on social media? Uh, they can find me at Cole, uh, K-O-L-E, C-F-G, uh, on Facebook. You can find me on Twitter, Instagram, and LinkedIn. Go Cubs. <laughs> they can find me on uh, let's see, LinkedIn and Facebook at Cole, C- with a C, C-O-L-E, C-F-G. I'm still working on my, uh, my closing here, but signing off, Cole J. Okay. And uh, then you can find Central Financial Group's website, www.centralfinancialgroup.com. You can follow them at uh, Central Financial Group on Facebook, LinkedIn, Instagram, Twitter. And you can find the landing page for the Fort Dodge area where Cole and Cole are from at cfgfortdodge.com. This has been another great episode with of How to Money with Cole and Cole. We will see you all next time. Yeah, yeah. You've been listening to How to Money with Cole and Cole, the podcast of Essential Financial Group, courtesy of Spin Market. Learn more about the Central Financial Group on their website, www.centralfinancialgroup.com. For now, I'm Cole. And I'm Cole. And we'll see you on the greens. Securities and investment advisory services offered through Royal Alliance Associations Incorporated, member FINRA, SIPC. Royal Alliance Associations Incorporated is separately owned and other entities and or marketing names, products, or services referenced here are independent of Royal Alliance Associations Incorporated. 
Material discussed is meant for general informational purposes only, and it is not to be construed as tax, legal, or investment advice. Please note that individual situations can vary. Therefore, the information should be relied upon when coordinated with individual professional advice. Past performance is no guarantee of future results. Diversification does not insure against loss. Any guarantees discussed refer only to fixed insurance products and are backed by the financial strength and claims paying ability of the issuing insurance company.